There was a time, not so long ago, when shopping for cars meant going down to the local newsagents, grabbing some magazines off the rack and heading home with them to read the reviews section. Then, after you'd done that, heading down to the local car dealership where you'd put a car through its paces on a test drive and hopefully, if you liked the car, negotiating a price that you could agree on. And as part of that process of buying the car, you'd pre-select the car that met your needs in terms of luggage carrying capability, style, driving experience, performance, gas mileage, and of course, price. Depending on where those things were most valued by you, your choices would change. But I'm guessing that the distance you could travel on a tank of fuel either wasn't on the list or was so far down the list of considerations that the salesperson could have told you it did 200 furlongs per tank without you even batting an eyelid. Price, practicality, driving experience, and maintenance costs were what mattered. Yet here we are, coming to the end of the first decade of the modern electric car, and those of us who are looking to buy a new car are still obsessing over the one thing we never used to consider back in the day. How far will it go per charge? Of course. It's for a good reason. When cars like the Nissan Leaf came to market back at the end of 2010, the paltry 84 miles or so that you could squeeze out of the car's battery pack meant that for most people, you needed to charge every night ready for the next day. And to tackle range anxiety on longer distance trips, rapid charging was the way that car companies tried to convince us that sub 100 mile electric cars were okay. Some of us accepted that challenge and found out for the most part that EV advocates were right. As long as you had a good reliable charging network and a way to pass the time when stopped at a DC quick charger, the ideal world scenario of having a limited range electric car wasn't so much of an issue. But the reality of broken charging infrastructure, poor interoperability, and horror stories about being stranded with a flat battery meant that all of us, even me, suffer from range anxiety. We worry about shorter range electric cars and yearn for one with a longer range. Of course, I get the reason why. Charging up an electric car takes longer than filling a car with gasoline or diesel. And it's for that reason that we yearn for long range cars so that we don't have to worry about charging all the time. Yet with most people traveling no more than about 50 miles on an average day, the real world reality of driving an electric car remains the same. Most of the time you're gonna come home with a partly full battery pack that has probably as much range left as the range you've used up during the day. In all honesty, any car with a range of more than 150 miles, 240 or 50 kilometers, will likely meet all but a few tenths of a percent of your annual driving needs as it stands, and perhaps all of it if you're willing to charge up a few times on a long distance trip. That is, of course, unless you live in the middle of nowhere, miles from civilization, and the nearest town is 90 miles away. In which case, you probably already know that owning an electric car is going to be kind of tough. So why do we obsess about range? Well, it's become another spec that we all focus on. A higher number means it's better. It also means it probably takes longer to charge, but I bet you didn't even think about that fact until I just mentioned it, did you? Just like computers, remember the infamous 640K is enough for anyone that's falsely attributed to Bill Gates? Well, we're in an arms race on range that only stops as long as the technology does, just like computers. And when we buy cars like this, we're always going to be left feeling that we've got the older, less capable, more ancient model, just like you feel when your chosen cell phone manufacturer brings out the new shiny model two months after you switched phones. The difference here is that a car isn't a cell phone or a computer. It's a large purchase decision that hopefully you'll own for many years and get many years use out of. Car switching every few years is something very few of us can afford, and those who do are usually looking for the next new and shiny before their current car has even changed its first set of rubber. <laughs> Look, nobody genuinely needs a 300 mile electric car. Heck, there are petrol cars out there that can barely travel 200 miles in a tank and driving for more than three hours straight without stopping is proven to put yourself and other road users at risk of an exhaustion induced accident. By all means, consider range and recharge time when buying your electric car. But if you want to truly be happy with your purchase, pick one you know you can afford, which has all the features you need rather than the features someone else tells you you want and ignore the hype about the latest and greatest, whatever that may be. The chances are that you already do this for other things in your life. So do it for your electric car shopping too. And I think you'll be surprised that the options that are available are more than you thought. And the next time you moan at someone for not getting a car you like, remember this, it works for them and they purchased the car for them, not you. 
That's it. Thanks for joining me and see you next time. <laughs> Bye.